All right. Um, I just wanted to do a little commentary on this um, this live stream conversation that happened a few weeks ago. Um, I believe it's by uh, Ace Philosophy and this guy Jack are the two people having a conversation. This video is on the channel. Um, Praise the I am. Now I will leave a link in the comment section down below to the original video if you want to watch it without commentary. But nevertheless, I'm going to pl push play on the video, and then when I want to leave a comment on something said, I will pause the video. Um, what's... <clears throat> hang on. What does this Ace guy, this Ace philosophy guy believe exactly? He believes he's going to help. Because he's a heretic. He believes believe you have to have works of righteousness to get into the kingdom of heaven. Go ahead and tell him, Ace. Yeah, you, uh, I think true, true Christianity is you must obey the commandments of Christ in order to attain eternal salvation. There's you If you don't do that, doesn't matter what you believe, you're going to hell. So you don't believe in the works of Christ? Do you believe in your own works? The works of Christ are to teach us exactly what I just said. That's no, no, it's by faith that we, we enter heaven. It's not by our works. That's not That's not what Jesus taught. Okay, so you're a heretic. Okay. So, you see how he dismisses you rather than arguing your point? Yeah, you know, I find that funny how, you know, the guy's like, oh, well, you view it that way, so that automatically means that you're, you know, a Pharisee or a hypocrite or something else. It's like, seriously? I mean, you're not capable of having a conversation with somebody that has a opposing view to yourself? I mean, come on, you know, that. so that's strike one, you know, that's strike one. It's like, you know, you should be at least capable of having a conversation with somebody that has a opposing view to you. Say, for instance, um, you know, sometimes I'll bring somebody on the live stream when I host one, and they'll have a conversation about how they believe that salvation is open for all mankind, whereas I hold the position that it's only for the Israelites. You know, we can have a friendly back and forth dialogue as to why we see differently on the topic, right? You know, but this cat, Jack, you know, the dude down there with the clouds <laughs> has his picture. But I don't know why the hell the dude has damn clouds as his picture. It's like, damn, it's like you couldn't find anything else. But anyway, I digress. Um, you know, I just find that to be laughable, you know, the statement that the cat just made there. That, that's, that's just stupid. Bear for me a second. Just go ahead, Jack. Oh, so A, A's philosophy obeys the commandments, in other words. He's intimating. I never said that. I just said that's what... Well, you I just said, said you had, that's what you had to do, so we're... I said, we're, yeah, I said that's what's necessary. I didn't assuming say anything that you do that. I, no, I, you, you can believe... You can recognize that truth without being, you know, obedient. You can just say, that's what Jesus taught. So you don't believe in the power of God to protect you, for, for to be obedient. Is that who, who was that? Jack Smack saying that? No, no, that was Sky Out. It was no, Sky Out. Yeah, God, 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 no, really sky, sky Out. God does not uh, uh, force you to believe. God does not give you grace to believe. God does not empower you. It's based on your own will and your own motivations and your own minds. No. So, yeah, so Jack, uh, the, the, the true gospel is that Jesus Christ came to earth as a servant of God to teach mankind how, how to properly obey, so that if they would do that and, and follow the commandments, then that is the path by which they will attain, attain eternal salvation. So, uh, when Jesus was dying on the cross, he accomplished nothing... How <laughs> you know, it, it's like, I don't I don't get how Jack could get that. I, truly, I'm already at a loss for words. I don't even know how to respond to this at the very start of this conversation. It's like, how the hell did you get that out of what A, well, A's, right? I'll just refer to him as A's because that's the beginning of his name there. But how the hell did you get any of that out of what A's said? I mean, I mean seriously, how, how did you get... Well, Jesus must have, you know, accomplished nothing when he died on the cross, is what you're saying. It's like, how the hell do you get that from 
the statement that A's made. I, I mean, I honestly don't get that. It's like, seriously, even if you don't agree with his statement, it's like, you know, it seems like you're just making up false allegations against him at this point because you don't like him. I mean, seriously, that that's what this is looking like already, you know, and that's not a good look to have, man. You know, that shows that you're just a dishonest person. Never, we're supposed to just read between the lines and figure out somehow that we have to obey the commandments. In other words, he died for he died for nothing, but that's okay because as long as we obey those commandments, is that what you're saying? Uh, Jesus didn't did, didn't die for nothing. He died. He died. He died. But you you all ignore the fact that he his entire life was about teaching something that is also important. So for him to come to Earth and live, he would eventually die. And his accomplishment is is the teaching that, that he gave us. Can you tabulate the commandments specifically that we're supposed to obey? Uh, Jesus said that uh, we uh, summarized it saying... It all sounds good. <laughs> if, if we love God and love our neighbors, that is the summation of the law and the prophets, and that is what merits eternal salvation. Well, well Christ said, um, you know, hang all the law on those couple when somebody asked him what's the greatest in the law to keep right and he gave him like three or four examples of things to keep but then he said on those hang the law and the prophets so christ was saying to follow the rest of the law but just start off with those ones because those are the very basic and very beginners out of all the law right so christ wasn't saying you just got to follow four hell and i will cut christianity too because they say that there's ten commandments that God gave. So wait, so you guys are only saying to live by four out of the ten? What about the other six? What about the other six commandments then? You don't got to live by those? So that's a cut right there. Um, so yeah, when Christ said that, gave the four examples, he said to hang the law on those, meaning what? Follow the rest of the law, but just begin with those because those are the very basic out of the law. It's very simple to understand. So yeah, Christ taught his followers to live their life in line with the law of the Old Testament, you know, that God gave down to Moses to give to the people. That's what Christ taught. You know, in fact, you know, all you have to read to end this conversation, you know, once and for all, is uh, one of my personal favorites, and this cuts the church, uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 17 to 19. You know, I didn't come to do away with the law. Anybody who teaches men to keep the law, he's going to be great in the kingdom of heaven. But those that teach people to break the law, they're going to be the very least in the kingdom, right? In fact, it, he even says those that teach people to break even the very least in the law are going to be least in the kingdom. So it sounds like Christ made it, it clear that this is very important that a person got to be teaching people to keep the law and keeping the law themselves because he he stressed the fact that anybody who teaches people to break even the very least in the law would be least in the kingdom so i think he makes it clear the importance of teaching people to live their life in, in accordance with the laws that god gave in the bible i mean again i don't honestly see how anybody could read the passage I just quoted and, and come to a different understanding of what it's saying there. I mean, I honestly don't get that. So I'd be very curious to see how Jack here, you know, could respond to that. Because honestly, just like the other cat, um, what was that dude, Savvy? When they were on the beginning of this live stream, you know, but I covered them in a different video, their conversation. What was it, him and Dirty? You know, that's you know, a different video, um, you know, but I'm interested how Jack could respond to that, because this cat, most likely, just like uh, Savvy, he didn't read the entire New Testament, let alone the whole Bible, right, these guys probably haven't even read the entire New Testament, you know, cover to cover, at least that's, you know, how I'm looking at it. So you have to ask yourself, do you love God, and do you, you know, Love your fellow human beings in an agape sense. Another verse I'll add on to back up what, what Aza is saying is, uh, what is that scripture? Uh, 1 John chapter 5 
and verse 3, for this is the love of God that we keep his commandments. Right, it says, for this is the love of God that we keep his commandments. Right, and then another one was at First John chapter 2 and 3. It says, he that says I know him but keeps not his commandments is a liar and the truth isn't in him. Right, so if you say that you know God, right, say that you believe on Christ and he knows you, right, like these churches teach, right, you know, I have Jesus in me and, you know, I'm in Jesus and Jesus is in me. That's what they say. But hey, the Bible says, he that says I know him but keeps not his commandments is a liar and the truth isn't in him. Right, so if you claim you believe in Jesus, this, Jesus, that, but then you don't live by what he said, well, then you're a liar then, according to the Bible. You work for their their well-being. Do you seek justice? Do you try to promote peace? Do you, uh, do you, you know, help the needy and the poor and things like that? These are things that contribute to our salvation and are required for our salvation. So is your love is your love mutable? I mean, is it, is it changeable? Is it something that is subject to, I mean, d decline over the years, or is it? I mean, how how is it now? I mean, obviously it has to be perfect. Yeah, so how how will you know in a year from now that you're going to continue loving your so-called neighbor? There's there's no guarantee that anyone. So, can... well then then how do you know you how do you know you're going to heaven? I don't. Okay, yeah. that that's the only true thing you've said. That, so thus far well, well hold on a second though but and again this shows that jack is just uneducated with what he's saying you know a lot of these guys and i i see this everywhere when i join random streams to have discussions with christians you know it, they come off as very prideful and ignorant you know we're thinking like like say for instance if i make a statement and say you know well i don't you know i can't sit there and say that i am sure that i'm gonna go to heaven when i die and why is that? Because, well, the Bible says many are called, but only a few are chosen. And we as humans living on the earth, we don't know who God has chosen to make it to the kingdom and those that are not going to make it there. We don't know that. So to go around and, and pretend like, oh, well, I'm saved. And, you know, if you say that you're, you know, you don't know if you're going to go there or not, you know, that must mean that you don't actually believe. It's like, no, you know, that's not that's not honest. That's not honestly correct when you read the Bible, right? It's a dishonest thing to go around and say that. Well, I know I'm saved, right? I know that I am saved. But how the hell do you know that exactly? Because the Bible says that he that endures till the end is the same that will be saved. So the end hasn't came yet, right? So if the end hasn't came, how can you go around and say that you're saved, you're saved, you're saved? But that the Bible says those that endure till the end are the same that will be saved. Matthew 24, verse 13. So, again, you know, these guys are just dishonest and, um, you know, hypocrites. You know, they're, they're all hypocrites is what these guys are. And, you know, one thing I'd like to ask these guys is if they say, well, all you got to do is confess you believe in Jesus and then you'll saved. Like how Perry Green teaches, right? But, yeah, there's a, a big problem, though. First of all, there's like 2.6 billion Christians in the world. And for those who don't know how much that is, that's 2,600,000,000. Think about that. Those are people in the world who confess that they do believe in the Bible and believe on Jesus, right? So wait a second. So according to you guys, according to Jack, he must believe that all those 2.6 billion people are going to be going to the kingdom of heaven when they die. And if he says no... Well, then how does he make a difference between himself and them, then? If all they have to do is say they believe and then they're saved. Again, it's it's ridiculous, you know, but it shows how dishonest, you know, certain of these people can be. You don't know you're going to heaven, that's because you're not. You don't know either. Yes. You don't know either. And then, you think then you know, hold I know on you. a second. Okay, that, that's the only true thing you've said that, so, thus far. Yes. You don't know you're going to heaven, that's because you're not. You don't know. He, he told A's, well, you don't know that if you're going to heaven or not. Well, that's because you're not, right? You're not going to heaven. It's like, well, first of all, who the hell are you to tell a person if they where they are or are not going? And and I want to point out, so basically he's telling Ace, <laughs> Ace V, I mean Ace philosophy, right? Again, I refer to him as Ace here just to, you know, I had to repeat the whole name every time I quote him. 
But uh, basically he's telling Ace, well, you're going to hell then. Because these guys believe that there's a heaven and a hell, right? So if you don't go to heaven, then that means you're going to hell then, according to his ideology. So basically he's telling Ace, well, I'm certain that you're going to hell because you're not certain that you're going to heaven when you die. A again, it, that's just astonishing, you know, just astonishing. You know, and uh, think about that. It's like what real Christian would tell somebody, well, I know for a fact that you're not going to heaven. It, it, again, it, it just, it's stupid, you know, it's it just stupid, it's retarded. Bear with me a second. Just a second. Alright, sorry about that. The, uh, the phone shut off for a second. Oh, you're going to heaven? That's because you're not. You don't know either. Yes. You don't know either. You think you nope. do. I know you're not going to heaven. The Bible says it's not by works of righteousness which we have done. So you're, you're saying it is by works of righteousness which, which you have done. But the Bible says it's not, so therefore you're not going. The Bible doesn't say anything. The authors of the Bible do. The Bible says, for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. That includes you. Is that what Jesus said? That's what Paul said. Okay. Jesus taught that, Jesus taught obedience, salvation. Obedience, righteousness, salvation. So, that's what I believe. No, and Jesus was obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. The Bible says in Romans 5, he was the one who was obedient for us. His, his obedience is imputed to us. His righteousness is imputed to us, and you're trying to establish your own righteousness. For well, just a question on that then, right? Because basically what, he, what Jack is saying is that, well, since Jesus died for all of us, that means that we don't have to live righteously, you know? So if you were to go around and, you know, steal from other people, you know, that'd be fine to do, right? That would be fine to go around and steal from other people because Jesus, you know, he wasn't... He didn't steal from people when he went on the cross, so see, he covered that for you to go do it. it. I mean, essentially, that's what this guy is saying. You know, it doesn't matter what our actions are because Christ took it all upon himself, is what he's saying, basically. But the knockout to this belief is, wait, why is it then that Christ told his followers to live righteously then? If he lived righteously for them so they don't have to. Think about that for a second. So, if... A believer doesn't have to live righteous. Well, why the hell did Christ tell them to live righteously? I'll give you an example. John 14, verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. He was talking to his followers, right? People who claimed that they believed in him. So, again, uh, the question has to be asked. It's like, so if a believer doesn't have to live righteously, then why the hell did the Christ himself tell his followers to live righteously then and follow the commandments? If he did it perfectly for them so they don't have to do it anymore. You know, and again, which I guarantee Jack probably never knew that that verse existed because he probably hasn't read it before. Or if he did read it, it went in, basically it went in one ear and came out the other. Right, like if you were to look in this guy's ear... You know, you'd see a, a damn, you know, uh, like you ever see these cartoons where they look in the sky, his ear, right, the character's ear, and there's no brain in the skull, it's just empty cobwebs. <laughs> you know, that's basically what this guy Jack is, right? You know, if you look at his ear, he has no brain, he just has, you know, an empty skull with cobwebs. You know, that's, <laughs> that's a good depiction of what you would see, you know, if you were to look in this guy's ear. You know, it's, it's, it's astonishing, but, you know, these are the dummies that are going around, you know, thinking that they're smart, you know, on these, uh, these conversations on these live streams. It's, it's, it's retarded. It, it's just laughable. Philippians 3.9 says you, you will not be found with your own righteousness based on the law. So you're eternally screwed. You that's know, about, that's the summation of, back, back. Let me tell you of, what, you of what your belief system. You have no clue if Jesus' righteousness has been applied to your account. You it says it's applied to our account if we've, if we've trusted him. It says it in Romans 4.11. It, it says it in Romans 4, over the last couple verses, it says, if we believe that God rose him from the dead, it shall be imputed unto us, even, at, it's to, even as it was to the, the Old Testament saints, Abraham, Moses, whoever. The Bible clearly says that, and you, well, all you're doing is just 
rejecting what it says and making up your own doctrine as you go, I guess. So do you believe do you believe you have assurance of salvation? Yeah, and because it's based on what Jesus did 2000 years ago, nothing can change that. It's it's based only on that. If so it's based on anything else then it then it's up in the air and it's on the ta it's on the table and nobody can really know if they're going to heaven or not. And my insurance is based on what was already done. Nothing can change what was done. The blood was already shed, and I have redemption through his blood. You have redemption through your works, which is a non-existent promise. So once again, you know, I think Jack, he has the same misunderstanding that Savvy had in the last conversation. I think what these guys believe that Ace is saying, and guys like myself, what they believe we're saying is all you have to do is do good works, and then by just those good works by themselves, it's going to get you to heaven without believing on Jesus, and that's not what we're saying. We're saying, first and foremost, you have to believe on Christ, that he died for you on the cross, and you have to believe that he was the Son of God. You have to believe that, first and foremost. And then, what Christ taught, if you truly believe on him, you would have these works that demonstrate you actually do believe in what you're saying, right? It's not all lip service. Because with Jack and Savvy, it's all lip service with them. But what me... Ace and, you know, other characters out there are trying to tell these people is, no, you know, you can't just have lip service. You actually have to demonstrate that you are sincere about what you claim you believe. And the way that you demonstrate that is the way you live your life and your actions. But, you know, these guys don't get that. They pretend like what we're saying is all you have to do is do good works and don't believe on Christ and that's going to save you just by doing those good works. It's like that's not what we're saying. You know, actually listen to what we're saying, right? You know, go to the store, get some Q-tips, clean out that earwax so now you can properly hear what we're saying, right? You know, both of these guys, Jack and Savvy, they both need to clear out their earwax because they clearly are not actually listening to what's being said. So, once again, we're not saying that all you have to do is do good works and then that by itself is going to save you. That's not what we're saying. We're saying, first and foremost, you have to believe on Christ, that he died for you and that he was the Son of God. And after you believe that, now you have to live your life in line with what he wanted. And he tells us what he wanted us to do. He, he clearly said to live in our lives in line with those commandments. That's what he told. In fact, he clearly said he's going to judge people by their works. The very last page of the Bible says it, Revelation 22 and verse 12, I'm coming back and I'm going to reward every man according to his works. Wait a second, reward every man according to his works? I thought you guys said that Christ doesn't care about works. So why the hell is he making it clear on the last page of the Bible that when he comes back he's going to judge people according to their work? If it's of no effect. You know, you ask these guys that question... And the stream goes silent because they don't really know how to address that. Because for one, they never knew that verse was in the Bible. And they just are at a loss for words on how to combat such a verse because it goes against everything they're saying. You know, again, it's, it's truly astonishing. It's according to the Bible. What convinces you that Jesus' death on the cross imputes righteousness to you? What? What is the basis of, of that faith? Where do you get that idea? Uh, the Bible says so. Okay, so if the Bible is wrong, then you your whole belief system is wrong, correct? If the Bible is wrong, then go play video games. I'm just saying, you, so you really... Go, go become a graffiti artist if the Bible is wrong. And nothing matters if the Bible is wrong. You have, I'm looking for the foundation, the, the basis of your assurance... And the assurance of your foundation is is not something that's verifiable. Or you know, <laughs> I just want to point out, by the way, you know what I find funny and laughable? You know, these cats in the comments section, right? You see the comments coming up on the uh, the left side at the bottom of the screen, right? There's been like, what, 10, 15 comments since the beginning of the the video that went by at the bottom. You know, all these guys are there... Saying that, Jack, you know, way to go, Jack, you know, you're you're clearly winning this discussion. You know, it's like, you know, I'm sitting here thinking, it's like, you know, it demonstrates how many of these brain-dead zombies are out here. You know, where all they do is believe, well, I believe on Jesus that he died for me. 
And then I mentioned to them, well, do you eat pork still? Do you, you know, follow the Sabbath? Do you, um, you know, do you wear fringes on your shirts? Are you wearing mixed fabrics? Are you, you know, among other things, right? Among a bunch of other, you know, subjects I could bring up in the discussion. And they look like, they look at you like a, you know, a deer in headlights, basically. You know, they're at a loss for words, like they never thought of such a thing before. Because all they know is, well, Jesus died for me, and as long as I confess that I know that, well, I'm good. And then they pretend like the Bible doesn't say, well, you gotta have righteous works in order to be counted worthy to make it to the kingdom. It's like they pretend that that's not in the Bible. They think, well, all I gotta do is say I believe, and then I'm good. So again, you can see all these dummies in the comment section as their comments flash by. They're all saying, way to go, Jack. You know, you're clearly winning, right? Or good point, Jack, as one of the previous per persons said. Um, you know, it shows that these people are just brain dead. You know, they think that that this guy, Jack's actually making, like, good points. I mean, that that's ridiculous. I mean, this guy is just making, you know, this guy, well, first of all, the guy is making himself look like a dumbass to begin with. But he's not making any valid points. You know, he's just saying some bullshit, and then the, the crowd is, you know, giving him applause for it. You know, basically, that that's all that's going on here. Provable. So you really, your assurance is an illusion, Jack Smack. I'm uh, just trying to help you understand this. You know, no, my assurance is based on what the Bible says. You're the one with the delusional assurance because you don't have assurance. What's your assurance you're, based on? You're, you're fickle. Uh, well, uh, Muslims have assurance well, that if the Quran, fickle emotions. I'm, I'm trying to help you see that you actually have just as little assurance as I do, but you have the illusion in your mind of assurance, and that's what gives you, the illusion is dangerous for you, Jack. Right. That well said, Ace. You know, well said. You know. They, these guys do have a illusion in their mind. You know, all they all they know is they look. As long as I confess, I believed, and that means I'm assured to go to heaven. But then it's like, but wait a second. What about? Are you, you ever read the verse um, Matthew seven twenty one? Christ said, "Not everybody that says to me, Lord, Lord, is going to make it to the kingdom of heaven." So wait a second. I thought that you guys said that everybody that confesses they believe on Christ is going to make it. But then Christ said that not everybody who confesses to believe on him is going to make it. So that's a cut right there. That's a, that's a knockout. Because if, if you have an illusion about something that isn't true, in this case it's going to lead to your eternal condemnation. If you're, if well, my, my assurance is based on God's word. If, if you're saying that's illusory or that's uh, f fictive or whatever, then you're, you're basically just rejecting the word of God, and that lets us know that you're not a Christian. You're not even worthy of the title Christian. Why don't you go be an atheist and twiddle your thumbs or something? Because I, I, I see these free gracers. They make a big deal about assurance, and they tell the conditionalists, you don't know if you're saved or not. And I'm just trying to help you understand that you don't know if you're saved or not either. You don't know if you're going to heaven. You feel like you do based on your presuppositions. But you're... You know, and a point I want to make just to back up what Aze is saying, because, again, he's making a very good point here. You know, here's a, here's a little fact, right? Here's a fact. Remember the statement I said about there's 2.6 billion people in the world who would consider themselves to be Christians. Now, here's a question. If I was to go up to, say, at least a couple hundred uh, million of them and ask them, you know, well, do you believe that you are saved and that you're going to heaven when you die? I guarantee you, if I was to go up to 500 million at least 150 million out of the 500 million would say, well, yes, you know, I am absolutely going to heaven when I leave this earth. Absolutely. Only a very small amount of those people would say, well, hey, I don't know if I'm going to, you know, go there or not when I die. Only a very small amount of people would say that. But the vast majority would say, well, yes, I am absolutely going there when I die. So the question is, so, Jack, you believe all those people got it right, or could some of those people be misunderstood, misunderstanding the Bible and having a false sense of hope? Right, that they are sure that they're going to go to this kingdom when they die, even though they're not living their life in line with the Bible. 
Because that's essentially what you're doing. You're saying, well, I just believe. But then if I ask you, do you eat pork? You're like, yeah, you know, I just had a ham sandwich this morning. You know, <laughs> shit, that's likely what he's going to say. Or this other cat, J-Man, right? The dude literally got, you know, shrimp as his uh, his YouTube icon, right? <laughs> it's, it's like, come on, man. It's ridiculous, you know, but these are the people that you're dealing with. You know, these are the dummies that you're dealing with out here, man. You know, again, it's quite astonishing. Quite astonishing. Just as, as in the dark as I am. Your, condi- your, your assurance is an illusion, Jack. You need to wake up. Conditionalism is... is- there's no more assurance for the free gracer than there is for the conditionalist. None. The belief systems are different, but you really don't have assurance. And you don't understand that as a conditionalist, I'm just being honest when I say it's okay to not know if we're going to heaven. We look at what Jesus has said before us. We look at his commandments. We do the best we can in this life, and God will judge us, and then we'll find out if we were good enough. If, and, that's, and that's when we'll find out. Then that's when we'll have assurance at judgment. Before that, there's no there's no assurance whatsoever for anybody. Right, and again, well said on that. You know, nobody has assurance that when they leave this earth, they're going to, you know, be counted worthy to make it to the kingdom of heaven. Now, we can sit there and say, well, we hope that we're, you know, counted worthy to be of that elect number, of course. But to sit there and say, well, I know for a fact that I'm going to be going there. I mean, that's just lying to say that, because you don't know that for a fact. In fact, that's a hypocritical statement to say that, because, again, you don't know that. Nobody knows that. So the honest, true Christian would answer and say, well, I hope so, but, you know, I can't say for certain. That's what a true Christian would say, because that's the right answer according to the Bible. Because, again, the Bible says many are called, but only a few will be chosen out of that number. So it's foolish to sit there and say that the random, you know, bum on the street that says he believes in Jesus, but yet he's living his life completely in contradictory to what the Bible says. Well, since he believed, he's going to go there when he dies. It's like you do know that some of these wicked, corrupt politicians around the world are Christian as well themselves, right? So you believe that they're all going to go to heaven when they die, even though they're literally living their life in contradiction to what the Bible says? I mean, come on, that's just stupid right there, man. That That's retarded. It makes no sense. You know, but that's how these guys think. Well, you need to find out right now that you that you have no salvation, <laughs> and you, your assurance is a figment of your imagination because you, it's not based on anything. My assurance is based on what God put in his word, and the word of God never changes, and the word of God abides forever. You're saying that this is all a delusion. Well, then you're just calling God's word a delusion. Well, he's not saying the Bible is a delusion. He's saying your understanding of the Bible is a delusion. Just like you're saying that his understanding of the Bible is a delusion, right? So he's not saying the Bible is a delusion. He's saying your understanding of the Bible and particular verses are a delusion in your own mind. And the fabrication of what they actually say. Very simple. And so now we know where you stand very, very lucidly. Do you believe, do you believe Jesus taught work salvation or not? No, because Jesus came to bring grace. Most- well, again, here's a question for you, Jack. Why is it there's so many verses in, in the New Testament, in the Gospels, where Christ told his followers to have works and to live by the law? Because what is a good work? Well, there could be many things considered good work, but first and foremost, just by living according to the law, the law, statutes, and commandments, that's considered to be good work. But then other things, such as, say, for instance, we see an example in, um, and this is, this is the bombshell right here. This is, this is the, this is the bomb sauce inside joke. Um, this is the knockout. So in Matthew 25, start at 31 and read the entire chapter down from that. There's two groups of believers that are brought before Christ. And he asked the one group, you know, well, well, when you saw people in the world that were, you know, sick, you, you helped them when they were homeless, you gave them clothing when they were hungry, you fed them when they were in prison, you visited them. Then they said to Christ, well, when did we see 
you and do these things to you. And he said, well, when you helped people in the world who were, you know, in these situations, it was like you did it unto me. And then the other group, he asked the same thing. And they didn't do those things. And they asked him, well, when do we see you, you know, in this situation and didn't help you? And then he said, hey, well, you know, when you saw people in the world, you know, in those situations and you didn't help them, it was like you didn't help me. And then he cast those people out because they didn't have those those good works of faith. But then he did accept the group who did have those good righteous works. And again, you can read it yourself. I'm not making this up. It's literally what it says. And that's a depiction of the last days when Christ returns. He's going to gather the believers on the right hand and on the left. And he's going to judge between them. And he's going to, you know, save those that were righteous. And he's going to condemn those that were unrighteous. And it shows that those people were actually believers on the side he rejected because they called him Lord. Right? They called him Lord, showing that they believed in him. So, again, it backs up the fact that not everybody who claims that they believe is going to make it. So, again, it's like, Jack, how do you address that? It's like, how do you address that chapter? All you can do, and just like, just like that dummy savvy, all you guys can do is pretend like that verse doesn't exist. Right? You can just pretend... The chapter doesn't exist so you don't have to talk about it because it refutes everything you guys are saying. That Christ is going to take people's works in their life into account when he judges them. I mean, again, it's like, I don't get how people can pretend that that's not in the Bible, that God is going to take an account of what you did in your life and you're going to get judged by it. Both your good works and both your bad works. Like, say, for instance, right, another example is when you read in Revelation, it speaks about the Judgment Day, right? The books were open and people were judged out of the things written in those books. Now, what's written in those books? People's actions and how they lived their life. Obviously, that's what's in there. And if that's not so, well, what else is it? What else is being taken account of in those, um, those books? And it just symbolizes that, you know, God's angels, they have their eyes on us taking account you know, and telling God, you know, what we're down here doing, you know, he's keeping track of everything, right? There's a track record involved in all this. You know, that's why the scriptures speak about these even parables that say that you would know somebody by their fruits, right? You'd know somebody by their fruits. Now, what does it mean by their fruits? Obviously, it's talking about you would know somebody by their doings and by their works. That's what it means when it says you would know somebody by their fruits, Right, a good tree can't bring forth corrupt fruit, and a corrupt tree can't bring forth good fruit. What does that mean? What is that parabolic speaking of? Clearly, it's parabolic speaking of that, um, you know, you would know somebody if they're good or bad by how they live their life and how their works. So again, it's all throughout the Bible that God's going to take your works into account. Again, anybody who doesn't acknowledge that is just... They even have they either haven't read the book or they're just being willfully ignorant. I mean, that's really what it is at the end of the day. I don't see any rational argument to how somebody could pretend that all these verses are not in there. They're just being willfully ignorant, that's all. Jesus came to bring the law. Jesus came to bring grace. It's not based on works. So is there anything Jesus said? Wait, hold on a second. No, because Jesus came to bring grace. Moses came to bring the law. Jesus came to bring grace. It's not based on works. Well, wait a second, though. Right, which, first of all, he's probably a Trinitarian, right? So he believes that Jesus Christ is the God from the Old Testament. So, by his logic, wasn't Jesus the one that gave the law then? Because Jesus is God, according to him. So, he was the one that gave Moses the law then, according to Jack. And then, wait a second, you're refuted because I quoted earlier in this whole response video, I quoted Matthew, the fifth chapter, where Christ said, I didn't come to do away with any of the laws of Moses, and anybody that teaches that men to break even the very least in the law, will be least in the kingdom. So Christ literally said, I didn't come to do away with the laws of Moses. So he clearly was enforcing them, telling you to live by them. So once again, I don't get how this character is ignorant of all these verses. I, I just don't get it. You know, it's like, you know, this guy's just winging it. You know, he's just making shit up as it goes along. You know, that's basically what this guy is doing. Is there anything 
Jesus said, that would indicate that salvation is by works or obedience to commands or anything like that, or the law. Is there anything Jesus said in the Gospels, as we have them, that indicates that salvation comes by obedience to commands, works, or the law of God, the Mosaic law? Well, hypothetically, it would be by the law if, if man could keep the law, but because we're sinners, it's not by the law. So yeah, you're in the camp that thinks it is by the law. It's well, let me comment real quick. Yeah, say say for instance, right? Because you know, A's said, asked them, "Is there any word in the Bible that indicates that Christ taught that you know you had to have works and that you know had something to do with your salvation?" Basically, right? Well, one good point that comes up that I brought up in the last video was if you go to Matthew chapter 19, start at 16 on down. You know, a rich young man came to Christ and asked him, you know, what do I have to do to receive salvation? What must I do to be saved? And Christ told him, hey, you better live by those commandments. So Christ was taking his work into account, saying, hey, well, you know, if you want to be saved, man, you got to live your life in line with those commandments. He didn't tell him, hey, all you got to do is believe on me and then, you know, uh, go smoke your joints and then you're good. You know, that's not what he told him. He told him, hey, man, you better live by those commandments. Meaning what? That Christ told him, hey, man, you better go, you know, show your, your fruit. You better go show your works. You better go show your work by living by those commandments, right? Doing what's good. So clearly that's a, a great example of that right there, that Christ was telling him, hey man, you, you gotta, um, if you want to be saved, you better live your life in line with what God says. Again, I don't see how we can pretend that that's not in the Bible. You know, it, again, it's just astonishing to me how people will pre pretend that, that verse isn't in there. Because you have not been saved by grace, but you're basing your assurance on a hypothetical, and that's why the Bible says that if you don't obey the law in its entirety, you have failed, you, 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 you fail to obey it at all. So you're in a damned if I do, damned if I don't system. I believe he's quoting uh, James chapter 2, verse 10. It says, um, if you break one, you're guilty of all. Or if you break one, you're guilty of all. I, I believe that's what, um, what Jack is referring to there. Stem, you lose either way. <clears throat> Well, actually, I'm not. If you if you understand the teachings of Jesus Christ properly, and the religion is called Christianity, Jesus taught that we are to obey, and if we're living in sin, if we repent... And by the way, what does the word Christian mean? Because a lot of these guys don't know that. What does the word Christian mean? It means to be Christ-like. That's what the word means, right? So wait, how, how the hell are you Christ-like then? Well, obviously... The way that you're Christ-like is because you live according to what he taught. I mean, clearly that's what the word means. In order to be a Christian, you actually have to live your life according to what Christ taught, because the word Christian means Christ-like. And he, this guy, Jack, probably didn't even know that. God will forgive us, and then our sins will be forgiven. Where does it say if you repent, you'll be forgiven? I believe it is Luke chapter 24, verses 53 to 57. So let me get this up real fast. Uh... Great discussion, gentlemen. I, I mean, I'm really enjoying this. Great job, Jack. Man, this is your first time, as far as I know, it on online stream. Yeah, so... Well, this is the first time I've actually had a mic that works. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this is... Yep. All right, so Luke twenty four forty five. Then he opened their minds to the scriptures, and he said to them, "Thus it is written that Christ would suffer and rise again from the dead the third day, and that repentance for forgiveness of sins will be proclaimed in His name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem." So there it is, right there, repentance for forgiveness from sins. Well, you you fail to differentiate between the different types of forgiveness. There's forensic forgiveness, which took place at the cross. Then there's ongoing experiential forgiveness, filial forgiveness. We're called to forgive our brother. We're called to ask God for forgiveness to restore fellowship. Those are non-salvific types of forgiveness. So you've just lumped it all together because you're confused about salvation. And you're just looking for reasons to trust in yourself 
and you found one with this misunderstanding of forgiveness. All right, so let's let's read this together. You want to let you can read. Verse I can quote verses that say we've already been forgiven in the past tense, because we're saved and we were forgiven at the cross. That's when forgiveness was offered in a forensic or a judicial a judicial sense. You're just bringing up verses that talk about ongoing experiential forgiveness. It has nothing to do with salvation whatsoever. But yeah, the reason why you do that, you enmesh it all together because you don't know what salvation is. You're still unregenerate in your sins, and you you sin whether you want to believe it or not. The fact that you don't think you sin is just more... I never said that. Well, well Jack, though, to be fair, you sin, though, too, right? Like, you're not going to be Perry Green and say... Why well, don't sin? You know, even though even though the guy's literally sitting on there, you know, smoking a joint, and um, well, shit, I can't say the other thing, but you know, the dude's clearly, literally sitting on there, sinning, you know, making up lies about other people on purpose, you know, clearly disrespecting God and disrespecting the Bible, you know, on there smoking, you know, it, it, among other shit that that guy's doing. You know, but it's, uh, you know, this is, this is just stupid. So, Jack, you admit that you still sin, though, too, right? Well, you must think it because you're in a system that doesn't allow sins. It doesn't allow sin if you are to attain eternal salvation. Well, then you're never going to attain it because you're going to keep sinning. And, and the fact you need to do what that. you believe is a lie and, and what you're teaching is a lie, therefore you're sinning on that See, here's the thing. Oh, Jack, right. You actually inherit a lot. I, I know you talk about the Calvinists, and you need to understand that you are actually a child of the Calvinists because you are inheriting a lot of their theology, and specifically the total depravity doctrine, which is a false doctrine, which says that humans are incapable of being righteous by their own merits. You need to understand that. Well, you are, you compared to God's standard, we can't be righteous by our own merits. You can have your own self-proclaimed righteousness based on your own metric, but you don't have the righteousness that, that God provides, which nobody can attain in this lifetime. That's why it's imputed to the believer, not, given to, not, not imparted to them based on what they do. Jack, how do you you, feel you've about got your own righteousness, which is great. Give yourself a pat on the back and a cookie. But, but see, your <laughs> righteousness is as filthy rags. That's why Paul said, be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but the righteousness of God, which is by faith. Your faith is in you, not Jesus, and therefore you're going to die with your own righteousness and drop into hell. Faith, is, faith in the Greek is pistil, and it doesn't trans. It actually doesn't translate. Wait. <laughs> Let me read that comment real quick. This was put up by Savvy, right? The same cat from the other video I did. He said, um, this Pharisee is talking about Ace. is a filthy brute beast. He's a rags truster. I believe he might have meant to write trufer. He doesn't believe in Jesus Christ. He's a Muslim because he preaches work salvation. You know, but uh, are we all going to ignore the elephant in the room and that being the fact that there's like literally 25 verses in the new testament if not more that literally talk about christ telling people they have to have good works and that christ is going to take their works into account on judgment day like like i mean seriously are we going to act like children and pretend that that's not in the bible so how, how do we how do we address those it's like how do we address those if you as a believer don't have to have any type of works, why the hell is Christ sitting there saying that he's going to take your works into account when he returns? Say, for example, as I said earlier, I'll quote the verse again, the very last page of the Bible, Revelation 22, verse 12. I'm coming back, and I'm going to reward every man according to his works. Another good one, 2 Ezra chapter 9, verse 7. Those that be found worthy to escape by their faith and by their works. So, of course, both faith and works are very important together, of course. Say, for instance, you have people out there who only believe in the Old Testament and they reject the New Testament, so they claim they live their life in line with the laws in the Old Testament, but then they reject Jesus and think that just by doing good works, that's going to save them. And that's, of course, not true. You have to, first and foremost, believe on Christ, and if you don't believe that, then you don't qualify for salvation, regardless of it, what type of righteous works that you do. And say, for example, that's why the Bible says, there's a verse in there that says, 
there'd be some, and I'm nearly paraphrasing it, but there'd be some that might appear to be godly, but they deny the power thereof. Meaning what? You have some people out there who might seem like good, honest people that might actually live according to some, um, you know, doing some good things that God likes, but then they deny Christ. So guess what? Even though they might do certain good deeds, that doesn't, that's not going to save them because they reject Christ. Remember, John, the third chapter, it says, he that doesn't believe, he is condemned already, right? So if you don't believe, then you're condemned. It doesn't matter what righteous works you do. You could be a millionaire and give all your money to the, you know, to the poor and the needy. But if you don't believe on Christ, then that's not going to save you. So again, you know, these guys get it all misunderstood. You know, nobody's saying that you're just saved by doing good works and that's it. You have to believe on Christ to begin with as the start and if you don't well then no amount of works is going to save you so again these guys are just deliberately misunderstanding what we're saying on purpose it seems directly to mere belief in english pistuo has the connotation of obedience trustworthiness and is well it doesn't faith and belief are, are, are synonyms i mean the exact same thing in english i mean the exact same thing in greek they've never had any other different meaning you're just you're just inventing a false meaning to justify your works based salvation if you believe something you have faith that it's true it's the same thing as trust well that's not entirely so because say for example there's some people who are say for instance there might be some atheist out there or historians who believe that yeah a man named jesus might have lived you know two thousand years ago but then they don't have faith that he's any type of son of god they just believe that there was a man who did live back then, who the story might have been written about him, but he was just, you know, a delusional person that, you know, thought that he was like a god or something, right? Or that, you know, that he was something special, basically. You know, so yeah, there's some historians out there in the world who do believe that a man named Christ actually did live 2,000 years ago and that the story might be written about him, sure. But then they say, well, you know, there's nothing special about him. He was just, you know, a crazy individual that got a following and they wrote stories about. So that's an example of somebody having a belief, but they don't have faith in that belief. In fact, that's not only an example, that's a great example of, of the statement. They all mean the same thing. Not to you, because you've imported a, a false, erroneous meaning of what faith is. You've redefined it, and that's the crux of your error. The correct definition of pistuo is faithfulness, and faithfulness requires obedience. So anytime you see the word faith, okay. it actually it actually means faithfulness, which means obedience. Okay, but if you're left with some open ending, some open ended, mysterious, nebulous, ambiguous concept, then it didn't come from God; it came from man. You don't know if you're obedient enough. You don't know if you're faithful enough. You're left in the dark as to whether or not you qualify for salvation. Mm -hmm. And I'm just here to tell you, you don't qualify. You're unsaved and going to hell. And that's what you need to hear. Oh, so, so, so now he's unsaved and he's going to hell. Well, well again, who, who the hell? Well, first of all, hell doesn't exist. But that's an entirely different can of beans right there for another time. But who the hell are you to tell somebody, well, you're not saved and you're going to hell? It's like, well, what if somebody was to say the same thing about you? I mean, would you then just believe that? Or would you have a, would you strike back at them and say that, well, that's not true? It's like, seriously, so how the hell can you sit there and say that about somebody? You know, uh, hell, and remember, this is supposedly like a true Christian right here, right? Well, a true Christian's going to sit there and tell people, well, I know for a fact that you're going to hell when you die. <laughs> I mean, shit, that's, uh, that's pretty funny if you ask me. You know, but it shows that these guys are just delusional. So I'm going to hell for teaching... A hundred percent, yes. No, hold on. So by teaching people that they are required to obey God's very commandments, I'm going to hell. Is that what you're saying? You're <laughs> teaching... <laughs> yeah, it's like, I, I agree with Ace there. It's like, so hold on, let me, let me get this straight. Let me get this straight. So according to Jack... For teaching people to live their life according to what God said in the Bible, right? To live their life according to the commandments in the Bible. So we're going to hell for teaching people to do that. I mean, seriously, can somebody make sense of that? 
How the hell does it make sense? And again, this is why I say, man, that a lot of Christians are just stupid. Again, that doesn't mean every Christian is, of course, but a lot of them are just stupid. There's atheists out there that have more reasoning than a regular Christian. And I know that from years of having conversations with both atheists and Christians. There's a lot of atheists that are more reasonable than a regular Christian would be in a conversation. At least that's what I get after years of conversation with people from both sides of the argument. No, but seriously, it's like, how the hell do you get that? How, how does that make any sense, what this guy just said? I mean, come on, that, that's just, that's just retarded. People to not trust Christ for salvation. I never said that. I wait, think... wait, hold, hold on, hold on a second, hold on a second. We, we gotta see that again. By teaching people that they are required to obey God's very commandments, I'm going to hell. Is that what you're saying? You're teaching people to not trust Christ for salvation. I never said that. I... When, when the hell, yeah, after watching this conversation, when did Ace ever say to not believe on Christ? It's like, well, when the hell did he say that? When did he tell people to not trust in Christ that he died for them and just have good works and then they're saved by that? Again, the, the shows is undeniably proves what I'm saying that these guys have a misunderstanding of what we're even talking about. They think that we're saying that just by doing good works by itself, that's going to save you. That's literally not what's being talked about here. So again, I think they're either being ignorant or they're just not paying attention. It's just... It's remarkable to me, you know, it's remarkable to me how ignorant this is. It, it's, it's astonishing, you know, but it shows that they have a low um, attention span, right? They got that TikTok um, attention span, right? You know, short 20 second video attention span. That's what these guys basically got. You know, but it's like, seriously, where the hell did you get that from anything that Ace has said? When did he say that, you know, you don't have to believe in Jesus and don't trust Jesus? It's like he didn't say that. So, you know, you, hey, uh, excuse me, Jack, you do know you're literally lying on him, right? A.K.A. committing a sin, and you're the guy that doesn't sin, right? Because apparently earlier you said that you don't sin. So... Now you're literally committing a sin right now by lying on this guy. You do acknowledge that, right? I mean, come on. You're just sugarcoating it, trying to make it feel more palatable. You're teaching people to trust in themselves. <laughs> Did you hear that? He said, Ace, you're, you're sugarcoating things, make it, making it seem more digestible for the people, right? The people want to hear that. Like, wait a second, what? Wait, what? <laughs> After the years of that I went to the church, man, people don't want to hear... Uh, the pastor tell them, hey, look, you know, you first believe and then you have to, as a believer, you have to do certain things, right? You have to live according to the law, statutes, and the commandments. People don't want to hear that. What people do want to hear, ironically enough, Jack, you're the one that's sugarcoating things and making it more um, palatable, as he said, for the audience and for the regular people. You're telling people what they want to hear. Just believe in Jesus and then everything's going to be okay. But then what Ace is saying, which is the truth, is, yeah, you have to believe on Christ and then you have to follow what he said. And people don't want to hear that. So again, ironically enough, you're the one that's sugarcoating things. It's not the other way around, man. And then you want to re repack it, recall that. You want to call that, I'm teaching people to obey the commandments. That's all you're doing. You're just telling people, you're dissuading belief in Christ. And telling people to trust themselves. If I, if te is teaching people to obey God, teaching them to trust in themselves, is do you equate the two concepts? It's fine if you're just telling people to obey God and obey the commandments as a non-salvific, secondary, post-salvation, discipleship, walk-based, spiritual growth oriented endeavor but no you're telling people to do that to get into heaven or to attain heaven or, or kingdom entrance or salvation or whatever you're calling it and that's where it becomes completely heretical yeah but but once again i i literally gave like what 20 verses in this video and the last video when um savvy was on that demonstrate that again this is only in the new testament right we didn't even go to the old testament to pull anything from there but it's all over the New Testament that a believer has to demonstrate their faith by their actions in life. 
And again, all you guys can do is say, well, that's not in there. And then pretend like the verses don't exist. I mean, that's all these guys can do because they have no argument. They can either say, well, we're taking out of context or pretend it doesn't exist altogether. And that's how they get around it. You know, but these guys are just hypocrites, right? They're clear hypocrites. That, that's that's what Jack and um, Praise I Am and um, what's the other cat? Savvy. That's all these guys are. And a false gospel. So does Jesus... You're not separating discipleship from salvation. You're just lumping it all together. And that's, a, that's symptomatic of you not knowing what salvation is. Okay, and that looks like that's the end of that conversation there. So, again, the recap, you know, Ace, he clearly won that conversation. I mean, hands down, you know, Ace did a phenomenal job um, in that conversation there. I mean, Jack, he got his ass cut to shreds in that debate. I mean, he got, that, that was a slaughter right there. You know, that was, that was ridiculous. Anyway, there's a link to it down below if anybody made it to the end. Put hashtag philosophy in the comment section. I'm going to say shalom.